What is up you guys? Welcome back. Welcome to Gara Movie House. Feels like it's been forever since I've done one of these videos. But there is a movie on Netflix that I've been wanting to see for a very, very long time. And that movie is Antichrist. If you guys have not heard about Antichrist, I highly suggest you guys stop this video and go watch the trailer. It seems pretty intense. I have also heard a lot of things about the movie. I've heard that it's like extremely controversial, it's disgusting, it's brutal. The things that go on in this movie are just things that are troublesome and not pleasant at all. You guys already know that I like artistic films, I love dramas. I'm always down to watch a controversial film, so why not? One, two, three. Get a movie house! <laughs> I got the movie already started and immediately it starts off with the main title, Antichrist. I honestly don't really know much about this movie. I've heard that there's some parts in the movie that are pretty disgusting and gory and just troubling to some people, I guess. It's actually my very, very first Lars Van Trier movie. If I'm saying his name wrong, I am really sorry. Not only is this movie extremely controversial, but the director, writer, Lars Van Trier himself is a very controversial filmmaker. Apparently a lot of the stuff that he does, people have problems with, and that immediately catches my attention. But like I said, I don't know much about Antichrist. There's like two or three characters throughout the whole entire movie. It's a drama slash horror, I guess you can say. According to the synopsis, a couple loses a child. Son dies. I don't know how old he is. I think he's like a baby or something. And the whole story pretty much is them having to deal with their son's death. I believe he is a therapist or a psychologist and he's trying to treat his own wife uh, going through the grief and pain and mourning of their son's death. The synopsis itself does sound like a pretty simple story, but according to the rumor that this movie has, it's apparently a lot more than that. And I'm thinking how much more can it be? Just two or three, maybe four people throughout the whole entire movie. But that's what we're about to find out. Extremely excited. But yeah, I already got my drink ready. I got my popcorn. Movie is right at the intro. I'm gonna go ahead and sit down and I will see you guys later. Okay, you guys, so I am pausing it at 36 minutes. There's Willem Dafoe right there walking in the woods. I feel like this is a really good place to pot to stop the movie because right now they're headed to the woods. There's a cabin that they have and the forest or the woods of Eden. They're going there hoping that he can treat her. He is a therapist and of course common sense would tell you that it's a big huge mistake to treat a family member. Have a family member as your own patient, especially your spouse. The intro to this movie, I have to admit, it was absolutely beautiful. It was extremely depressing especially having to see their son die. But the way that it was shot and delivered, especially like as an intro to the movie, black and white, slow motion with beautiful music on top, getting the intro and then having it cut to color with them like bawling their eyes out at the funeral, you pretty much can guess what you're about to get yourself into. I mean, Right now, I'm 36 minutes, 14 seconds in, and I haven't smiled once. Like, there is nothing happy or joyful or good about this movie. It's just very depressing and very dark. The reason I wanted to stop it here is because I'm getting the feeling that things are about to start happening. Certain things have happened, but they're pretty much just conversations. I can see why people have a problem with it, especially with the intro, because there is something that happened in the intro that I was like, whoa, was that really necessary? Yeah, I got an hour, 10 minutes left, most likely an hour if I don't count the credits. Uh, yeah, let's see what else happens. And 
and it is over. All right, so the movie just ended and wow. <laughs> The last 20 minutes of this movie, which goes by very quickly. Actually, I think the whole movie pretty much goes by quickly. It, it almost feels like not much would be happening with just two people. But without much happening, a lot is happening. That probably makes absolutely no sense. I totally get what people are saying about this movie being disgusting and disturbing. But... I'm not sure if it's that big of a deal. I just saw the movie, so I know what scenes they're talking about. And yeah, it's pretty horrible. But at the same time, I don't think it has that shock factor. You know what I mean? Like so many movies do things just to be controversial. So many movies do things to be disgusting, just to get attention. And I'm not sure if that's the case here because those scenes are very quick and they don't really feel like they're there just to be there and now it is time for me to review the film and share my opinions which I do in the movie room so let's go ahead and do that because there are a few things to discuss <laughs> Okay, so here we are. We are in the movie room. Let's talk about Antichrist. So the synopsis was pretty much what I was saying before I watched the movie. The introduction to the movie is a black and white, very slow motion with beautiful music on top of it of a husband and a wife having sex. And while they're having sex, their two-year-old son decides to wander around the house, climbing out of his crib, going from room to room, running down the hallways. There's actually a scene where he's watching his parents have sex and they don't notice him because they're too busy with themselves. He decides to play around with some furniture, he climbs furniture, and ends up literally walking out a window. You see this child being two years old, maybe three, just fall right into his death. After that, you see this movie going to color and you see this couple going through grief. They're going through mourning. They're having a very, very difficult time, especially the mother. The husband being a therapist decides to treat his own wife. I don't think you should ever treat a family member, especially your spouse, but he decides to do that. And the first half an hour is him just talking to her, trying really hard to figure out how to help her. William Dafoe's character, he literally, like, he's not showing any emotion. He almost doesn't really care or isn't really focused on the fact that his son just died. But instead, he's focused on the wife and not just helping her with her emotions, but sort of forcing her to not feel those emotions. He's aggressive emotionally he thinks he's helping her, but he's really not. So during that period of him trying to help her, during I believe was the first chapter, they then decide together that they should spend some time in the woods where they own a cabin. So they decide to go stay there for a while. They decided that maybe it would be best for him to treat her there and help her cope with the death of their son. There is a moment in this movie where she looks at him and says, will things get worse? And he's honest with her and says, yes, things will get worse. And he wasn't joking around. Things actually got worse. I mean, there's nothing pleasant about this movie. There's nothing joyful or happy about this movie. Things literally just get worse and worse. And he just tries to help her in every wrong way possible. I love the fact that in the first chapter, whenever she asks her husband if it's going to get worse, he openly says that it is. I love the fact that they immediately make that clear because now that I think about it, from beginning to end, there isn't one part through the whole entire movie where you find yourself rooting for these characters, especially because the kid dies right from the beginning of the movie. And the reason she's having a hard time with her son's death is because she blames herself for his death. Straight from the beginning, you see that event. So you pretty much get a feel, you get an idea of what the rest of the movie is going to be like. Because with an intro like that, there is no way there's gonna be anything good or anything uplifting or enjoyable about this movie. Especially after William Dafoe's character tells his wife, yes, things are going to get worse. So why would anybody watching this movie expect anything else? All you can do is just sit there 
and watch things get worse. Even though the synopsis sounds very, very simple, the whole story itself is extremely complicated. Trust me. The whole entire movie is split into chapters. I believe there's like three or four, and each chapter represents what the mother is going through. Going through the stages that one would go through after a tragic event. Honestly, just having watched the movie, my eyes were glued to the TV from beginning to end. Either because you cannot believe what you're watching or because it's just beautiful to look at. And in some cases, both. I wouldn't necessarily say that this movie is a horror. It's an art house film. It's a dramatic art house film with horror elements built into it, which definitely works. After their son dies and they bury him and William Dafoe's character, the husband, the father, decides to start to treat his wife as a therapist, they try this practice where he will ask her to visualize herself in certain places doing certain things to help her cope with her emotions. Those dream sequences, I thought were gorgeous. They were beautiful in every single way possible. But even though they were beautiful, they were still extremely, extremely creepy. And that's what I'm talking about whenever I mention the horror element. Even though there wasn't much going on in these dream sequences, there was still a lot to look at. And the fact that the cinematography and the way it was shot makes it look so creepy with the fog and the glow on top of everything and the very strong vivid colors. And because your eyes are glued at this beautiful scenery, you still get that feeling that something bad is about to happen. But even though you get that feeling because it's so beautiful, you can't look away. I do have to give a lot of credit to the actors and not just the actors, but the writer and director, especially Lars Van Trier. Again, if I'm saying that wrong, I am really sorry. 97% of this movie is just two characters, husband and wife. Not only is it just them two, but it's them two in the woods in a cabin. But you're so busy watching this movie and watching everything that is going on in the movie that you almost forget that there's only two people in this movie. There's so much going on emotionally that you almost don't even realize it. It just goes to show that you don't need much. All you really need is love and passion for your project. Anybody can make a movie. I believe that each actor portrayed the character that was on script the way it was supposed to be portrayed, which is the main reason why this film is so controversial is because how realistic it seems, how real it feels. There's a lot of things in this movie that a lot of people aren't gonna want to see. Honestly, before I watched this movie, I had already heard a lot of things, how this movie was disgusting, and there were a lot of scenes, certain things that were happening that really disgusted people. I literally just saw the movie. And if I remember correctly, there's like two, maybe three things that could be disturbing and disgusting, but each one lasts for like two seconds. The movie is almost two hours long. The movie is just two characters talking, dealing with a situation, but people just want to talk about five seconds of the movie. I mean, I guess I kind of understand why, because the things that they show aren't exactly forgettable. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Those three scenes involve male body parts and female body parts, all below the waist. Not only do those scenes, which last only a few seconds, involve those body parts, but they involve violent act towards those body parts. I will be absolutely honest with you guys whenever I say that I am a fan of violence. Not only do I enjoy violence in movies or in TV shows, but sex scenes, body parts, certain things like that don't bother me at all. They don't really affect me the way most people get affected, I guess. The thing that bothers me whenever it comes to sex and violence is the reason why it's there. So many people decide to put that in their movies because they want to up their ratings, because they want to be controversial, because they want attention. In my opinion, this movie wouldn't be as good as it is without those scenes. Those scenes have a purpose 
and they have a reason to be there. And I already said, yes, they were disturbing, and yes, they were disgusting. For this movie, for what it is, it needs to be there. It works. It gets the point across, and it delivers a message, a strong message strong message this movie is definitely not for everyone definitely not for everyone but if you are a fan of art house films then i highly recommend it this is definitely one to check out i honestly enjoyed it very much i'm not sure how often i'm gonna watch it but i do see myself re-watching this i am very glad that i got to watch this movie it was definitely a great experience for me. I've never seen a movie like this before. This being my first Lars Van Trier movie, I'm very, very interested in watching his other work. But yeah, you guys, thank you very much for watching. Like I said, I really did enjoy this movie. It's definitely not for everyone, but if it does sound like something you could enjoy, then by all means, I highly recommend it. If you guys have seen this movie, leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you thought about the movie, whether you liked it or not. Any comments that you guys might have about this movie or our how films in general or Lars von Trier movies in general, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. As always, you guys, like the video if you like. Leave your comments down below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you for watching Gary Movie House. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. Peace out, homies.